17 minutes past 8 o'clock on a Wednesday night here in Hong Kong. A beautiful evening. You're watching Newsstream. The first delivery of aid from the Red Cross has arrived for the desperate population in Venezuela. The health minister says the shipment includes things like emergency kits, generators, and tanks to store water. Hospitals struggling with power outages right now. There's a shortage of medicine. Some of those will also be receiving supplies. And while Venezuela's crisis has left many people struggling just to find food and water, the basics, there are others in the country who are sitting pretty, making millions of dollars from drug trafficking. After a months-long CNN investigation, we have learned that Venezuela is becoming a cocaine courier using a vast smuggling network through Central and South America. CNN senior international correspondent Nick Peyton Walsh has our exclusive report. Below is a cocaine superhighway enriching Venezuela's corrupt elite and bringing coke to American streets. These thin lines are secret pathways from Colombia's cocaine farming heartlands below across into neighboring Venezuela. From there, billions of dollars of the drug are smuggled north in tiny planes, US and regional officials have told CNN, aided by Venezuela's army and elite. The Colombian military we're with don't get any lower to stay out of the range of traffic and machine guns and talk to locals mostly through the leaflets they drop. We've stopped drug flights out of Colombia, he tells me, but not from places we don't control. He means Venezuela, just five miles away. Below, they think they've spotted a cocaine laboratory, one of many fueling Venezuela's role as a cocaine courier, which a CNN investigation has learned is booming just as the country collapses. 240 tons went from Colombia to Venezuela in 2018, up a third in one year, a U.S. official told us, which could fetch $40 billion on U.S. streets. That traffic happening down below, one possible reason, it's alleged, why so many in the Venezuelan army and government are reluctant to give up on Nicolas Maduro. They're simply making too much money. The trade remains mostly secret inside Venezuela, on the other side of the border here. But we were able to learn more about these illegal routes in from recent defectors from the Venezuelan army border the patrol the and about how their mm -hmm. officers ordered them to let cross specific trucks carrying cocaine. For five years, this sergeant got those orders often three times a week. The cars that crossed both weapons and drugs were pickups, and we would be told the color and make of the truck and when, usually just after dawn or dusk. Everything was coordinated by the brigade commander. He'd send a lieutenant to tell you what needed to cross, and this was arranged high up above. Those who didn't agree were swapped out, automatically. He fled to here, Colombia, when the pressure to comply got too much, and his unit found themselves confined to base. We were locked on the base. The general would say, everyone must be with us. Leave or speak against the government, you'll get arrested. They had us brainwashed with food handouts. One night, I couldn't take it anymore. I went home and told my wife, we leave for Colombia. My son started crying and said, Dad, what are we going to do? But I knew if they stayed without me, they'd be captured or interrogated. Venezuelan state TV occasionally shows how their armed forces crack down on the trade, here intercepting Mexican pilots. They have previously rejected allegations they're actually running the drugs and did not respond to several requests for comment. But a U.S. official has told CNN these flights are surging. They used to take off from the remote hidden runways in the southern Venezuelan jungle. But in the last three years have moved north, a U.S. official told CNN, to reduce flying time. They used to be three a week, but last year they were almost daily. This year, they've seen as many as eight in a single day, a regional official said, using 50 hidden runways. CNN has seen a confidential US radar map approximated here that shows the sharp turn left the planes from Venezuela take before landing on the remote Central American coastline off of Honduras before the cocaine travels north through Mexico to the United States. is where we pick up the trail of this booming traffic again on the coastline below turned into a surreal graveyard of narco planes. Cocaine cargo they carry is worth so many millions the plane itself is just a fraction in a billion dollar deal. So many are discarded like used plastic bottles all over the jungle or crammed here into one river bend. 
The troops we're with don't want to be on camera for their safety. Some of these have their markings torn off to make the job of working exactly where they came from even harder. America's drug habit is where the money, the rot, all begins. But that same open market also supplies a key part of the logistics here. Well, the fires deprived most of this plane of kind of distinguishing characteristics, but you can still see N4 there, N, meaning this plane originated in the United States. Brokers, a US official tells me, buy up dozens of old planes that auctioned in the United States and hide their ownership in shell companies to send them south to start their cocaine journey north from Venezuela. Again, uh, another N, which means another plane that started its days in the United States. It's not just traffickers in Venezuela and the US making billions. The entire region is in on it. This is surely Honduras's biggest industry, the billions at stake everywhere. From this jungle road, which is actually a hidden runway, up to the Honduran president's brother, indicted last year on trafficking charges, which he denies. You can't stop the planes being sold or taking off, one officer tells me, so they instead just have to try and make landing harder by blowing holes in the runways. Just even slowing down this multi-billion dollar trade requires so many more holes to be blown in this vast expanse of jungle. The amount of money cocaine brings here literally dwarfs any effort to fight it. Insane amounts of cash into some villages along this coastline that have none. In fact, the Honduran army tells us traffickers flying towards these villages often kick their cargo overboard when they think they're about to be intercepted. Each 30 kilogram bundle of cocaine is attached to floats and then drifts ashore. They then pay these communities of fishermen $150,000 for each recovered bundle. It's a calculus for corruption that most officials I spoke to admit beggars belief and that no police or aid operation can really hope to challenge. One that sees the collapsing Maduro government as the alleged couriers cashing in fast in a region of desperate delivery men. Nick Payton Walsh is just back from uncovering that story, and he joins me now live from London. Nick, uh, just incredible what you saw on the ground there. But my question is, we know the money is massive. How widespread, though, is the corruption believed to be within the Maduro government, and how big of a factor is it believed to be in keeping him in power? Well, it's interesting. U.S. government officials have alleged for some years now that key players around Nicolas Maduro, uh, often his number two to some degree, or rather they've indicted Tarek al Asaimi and Diosdado Cabello, who have sort of served as his kind of ranking number two deputies over the last years. They've both been indicted and sanctioned because of American officials' allegations that they are essentially profiting from or assisting in running the drug trade through Venezuela. And they have both denied that quite uh, forcefully and they have not stood trial for it at all because those indictments are, of course, in the United States. So, uh, two opinions there. But if you look at how that machine functions, as we saw ourselves, there's a lot of evidence, as I say, the Venezuelan government didn't respond to our requests uh, for comment for that report, but a lot of evidence suggesting that Venezuela's territory is a key conduit for all of that. And the key point here, Will, is that Colombia's with some American assistance, they say, more or less shut down their airspace to these illegal, illegal uh, narco flights. Instead, they moved across the border into Venezuela. And the argument is, how can you fly that many planes out of a country without the government being aware that that is, in fact, occurring, without their own radars seeing how that happens? Venezuela still controls its airspace pretty well. That's the key question here, and that brings into question whether or not uh, this goes up to the highest levels. American officials say it does. If you talk to that Venezuelan defector you heard there and many other Venezuelan defectors we spoke to who didn't end up in that report you just watched. This goes all the way up through the chains of military command, eventually profiting uh, to those on the top. U.S. officials have repeatedly pointed to the money flow, leaving Venezuela very quickly. One U.S. official I spoke to said it's very hard to distinguish what comes from drug profits, what comes from embezzlement, but still the evidence is quite substantial. As I say, Venezuelan officials have historically denied this, uh, but we saw an awful lot to suggest that Venezuela, the trade is picking up incredibly fast, Will. Hmm. And of course, none of it would be possible without an ample supply of paying customers in the United States. Nick Payton Walsh, thanks for that uh, incredible reporting. We appreciate it.